all right so uh, before moving on to the cart page we have to create the functionality of add to cart we have to create the functionality of adding different books into our cart so if you go to our books page and if you go to our in any individual book you can see that we have add to cart button over here now when i click on this add to cart i want this book to be added to the cart okay and the cart will basically be a data uh, it will probably be an array of different objects and i want this book object to be added to that cart so that we can later on show all the items in the cart page okay so we're going to start with that functionality so if you go back to our code uh, let me first um, clean up these tabs so let's just close everything for now and let's open our book page so in our pages we have our book details page and that is basically um, this page if i'm not wrong so let's go to book details.js and there we have a details section um, which which is basically um, this component this entire thing so let's just go to details section uh, which is inside our components layouts and details section so inside our components layouts details section and there we have the details section.js let's just open that up and here you can see that we have this uh, add to cart button which is our this button uh, here i would what what i would want is instead of this href let's add an on click event and let's set that to handle add to cart all right so whenever we click on this uh, button add to cart um, this function is going to run handle add to cart which we haven't created so let's create that now so let's say uh, const handle add to cart equals we're just going to create a single simple arrow function now inside this let me just add a console log first and see if this if this is working or not so i'm just going to add working here let's just save this and let's go to our browser and let's see if this works or not let's go to our console if i click on add to cart you can see that i'm getting this um, working text in our console so that means this code is working so now what i want to do is first i would want to have an a condition as in like if we are not signed in to our application or to our site then we won't be we should not we should not be able to add the books to the cart okay because we won't have a user account and we won't have the we won't have the access to the cart page so we should not have the access to add the books to our cart okay so if the user is not logged in i don't want to add the book to the cart <coughs> but if the user is logged in then only i'll i would want uh, the add to cart functionality mm -hmm. so in order to create that functionality we would, i think we would again want the user data and that we're getting in our app.js right when the user logs in uh, so let me go let me open up app.js as well and you can see that we have added a context user context here that provides our user data like if it's logged in and it like the user data is null when it's not when the user is not logged in so yeah we need that data in order to uh in our detail section as well in order to like make this functionality so um in our detail section dot in our detail section dot js let's import what we need so in in at the top here let's import use context because we're going to use that in order to get the user data and we're also going to import this user context all right so import user context from app.js let's just go here over here and here here and here with the help of use context and the user context we are going to get the user so const user is equals to use context and inside the bracket we are going to add user context so the use context is going to return the data that the user context is providing 
in our case uh, this authentication authenticated user so we will get that over here now if I console dot log user here uh, we should get the user value whenever we click on this button right because this function is going to work let's just save that and see and if I click on add to cart now I'm going to get null which is actually true because currently we are not logged in and whenever we are not logged in the user value should be null because that's what we have set over here all right so now let's just log in a user because we have already created the login functionality as well so i think uh, we had a credential called john at gmail.com and for the password i think we had one two three four five six let's just log in all right now we have successfully logged into our application uh, let's just go to our books and let's just click one book so if you click on this add to cart button now I'll now you can see that we are getting this user object instead of null okay because we have logged in so with the help of this uh, user data we are going to create the functionality that if the user exists then um, we're going to add to cart if the user does not exist then I think we should just redirect the user to our uh, login page so let's just go back to our code and let's go to details section.js and here instead of console logging the user i'm going to add a condition saying if and here i'm going to write user so basically i'm saying if the user exists because null will return false so if there is a user then for now i'll just add a comment and say add to cart right add to cart yeah this functionality and else if the user is not present or if the user is null then what i'm going to do is uh, redirect our user to the login page so in order to redirect again we need a custom hook that comes from react router dom which is use navigate right and let's just initialize this hook over here const navigate is equals to use navigate right and with the help of this navigate we can we will be able to redirect our user so here I'm just going to say navigate and inside the brackets I'm just going to add the path which is slash login I guess yeah it's login so uh, this will navigate the user to the login page and I also want to like uh, add a notification so let's just say alert and um, let's just say here please log in or sign up first something like this okay let's just save that and let's see if this works or not uh, first I think we should log out of the application let's go to our books um, let's select any of the book and let's just click on add to cart and there you go guys we are get, we are getting this notification saying please log in or sign up first if you click on ok and you will be redirected to the login page so now let's just log in and let's go back to our books and click on any of the book now when the user is logged in what I want to do is I want to add the add the book to the cart okay so for that what we need to do is first we need to create our cart data or the cart items and we're going to use context api here as well in order to keep track of our cart data because the cart data is not only going to be used uh, here it's also going to be used on the cart page as well so let's go to our app.js and since we have already defined like create context here let's just create our cart context first because i want the cart data i want the cart context to provide the cart data and the user context to provide the user data All right so i'm going to say export const cart context is equals to uh, create context right and for the initial value i'm just going to add an empty array because i want the cart data to be an array of objects and here like let me also add 
a state of cart items right and set cart items equals to you state and here I'm going to add an empty array again <clears throat> so here I'm just basically uh, initializing the cart items and and here <coughs> let's just wrap this entire components um, with our cart context dot provider as well so let me add it below the user context dot provider like you can also add it above like it doesn't matter as long as you like wrap these components so i'm gonna say cart context dot provider right and let's just add these inside of the cart context dot provider <laughs> and for the value now here i'm going to now here instead of just like like um adding cart items over here just like we did with authenticated authenticated user i'm also going to add the set cart the set cart items here so instead of one value i'm going to add uh, the two values over here and you can also pass this set cart item function as well in order to like send more than one value what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an object and here i'm going to pass the cart items and the set cart items all right basically these two i'm going to send uh, the cart items and the set cart items as the object properties so here instead of this array let's just add an object uh, because the value now is basically a single object and this object is going to have two things cart items and set cart items all right and you can also check that out so if you save this and let's go to our details section and let's call our cart context so i'm going to say const cart is equals to use context and inside it i'm going to add cart context right so uh, here let me just console log the cart console.log cart right and let me show you what this cart has so here i'm getting an error that says cart context is not defined um, that is because i haven't imported it so cart context and you can see that the error is gone so if you go to our browser and click on add to cart because we are already logged in we should be able to see the cart value okay and cart value is basically what this value is sending us which is currently this object that contains the cart items and the set cart items so let's see what we get so if i go here and if i hit add to cart there you go guys we are getting this object which has two things the cart items which is an empty array currently and the set cart items which is basically a function that is going to change the value of the cart items so yeah we are getting these two values in our detail section so here instead of calling the console logging cart i'm going to add um this book right here in our cart items all right so let's see how we are going to do that uh, let's just uh, let me just remove that for now so now if you look at it at uh, in our details section we have this book data that is basically a single object uh, that has the information of this particular book data so let's just console log this book data and see like what we get okay and remember that we also have another book data over here that we are currently getting from utils.bookdata which is basically a collection of all the books don't get confused over here because this is in capital letters and this is in small b so this will th this value is completely different than this value this is just uh, this is just the information of that particular book that is currently there in our book details all right so let's just console log this so console.log uh, i'm going to console uh, book data let's just see what we get if i click on add to cart there you go guys we are getting this book data that is from the earth to the moon currently which is this book 
if I go over to different book let's say uh, let's go to the alchemist and let's click on add to cart you'll be getting this particular book so what you want to do now is whenever 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 I hit the add to cart button I just want to like um, add this object inside our cart items okay which is currently present inside this cart so instead of using uh, this variable let me also destructure this object and say cart items and set cart items items right so I'm basic so these two are the properties of a particular object which I'm currently destructuring so instead of using cart dot cart items we'll be able to use like the direct values which is cart items to and set cart items okay and you can always check uh, the concept of destructuring uh, later on <clears throat> but for now let's just um, focus on our functionality which is basically adding this book data in our cart items and we're going to use set cart items in order to do that so here let me add a set cart items function and here basically we are going to create a new array and here we are going to have like whatever the original value it contains so uh, cart items and we are going to add a new value inside of this array which is book data so here what we are doing is let's just say we have a book and we add to the cart items right and let's say we want to add another book so when you add another book you want the array to have the previous book as well as the new book right so that is what this code is currently doing if an array already has uh, certain items then we will add that item as well but along with that we will also add this new value all right so that that is what set cart items is currently doing right now and this is basically a spread operator this three dots and what this means is whatever value that was present it's going to add that but along with that it's, it is also going to add a new value so this is how we are going to add the new data into our cart items and once it gets added we can also check what we get uh, once we add our book data to our cart items so in order to do that let's go to our app.js because that is where our main cart items is let's create a new use effect over here all right and let's add a dependency array and inside this dependency array let's just add a cart items so basically this use effect is going to run whenever there is a change in this cart items array and here I'm just going to console.log console.log cart items all right this is just this is just to check whether the change is actually taking place or not so if you go back to our yeah book details if I click on this add to cart now you can see that we are getting this new array with an object inside of it and that object basically has our book details okay and since we're getting this in app.js 33 so getting this inside yeah app.js 33 line 33 which is console logging this so we are being able to add the data into our cart items and like if i go to another book uh, let's say this one around the world in 80 days and if i click on add to cart you can see that now we are getting these two items and these two items includes the first one the alchemist which we had uh, currently which we had added previously and this new one which is uh, around the world in 80 days that we just currently added okay so i hope you understood about the importance of the spread operator and why we use that so we, we have just added our individual books into our cart so yeah i think this is it about the add to cart functionality so let me just uh, uncomment this section because we don't want to console log currently and now what i want to do is i also want to add an alert here whenever i like add add a user to the cart i also want an alert here that says um, the book okay let me add a back tick instead of uh, double quotes 
uh, this one right here. We're gonna use template string, and this is basically says um, the book. And I am going to add a book name here. So book data dot, and I think book name should be yeah book name. <coughs> book name. So the book uh, book name is added to the cart something like this okay uh, let's just save this and see if i add to if i go back uh let's let's yeah let's add our harry potter um if i add to cart there you go guys we're getting this alert that says the book harry potter in the chamber of secrets is added to the cart and once it click ok it gets added to the cart currently it's not showing here because we have uh, we have currently removed our console log uh, and i'm also going to remove this product listing all as well so if i go back to our code uh, i think product listing all dot js this right here let's just remove this all right so now that we have successfully added our books to our cart now we can actually build start building our cart page and then like show those datas over in our cart page okay so let's go back let's go to our cart page and let's start styling the ui so first things first let me go to or like let me open up our cart page right yeah uh, first thing is i need the header and the footers first so let me add a header by saying import header uh, was it header i think it's navbar so navbar and i'm also going to import the footer so footer right there so let me add those components over here let's say it's navbar and footer okay let's just save that and see okay we are getting this and i think we now need to add our cart items so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create our cart item container component so i'm going to say cart items container all right and basically this is going to be our like container for all our cart items and the cart items is basically going to be in a card so let me create this component first so inside our layouts components layouts uh, i'm going to create another folder that says uh, cart items container right and inside this i'm going to create a new file that says cart items <coughs> container dot js and here let me create a simple component first so we have created a simple component that just uh, renders this cart text so let's just uh, bring it here in our cart page so import cart items container and like our vs code is directly gonna like automatically gonna map its file so let's just save this and see what we get okay we are getting this cart our text over here and the reason why it's coming up is because i think we haven't added the prop here which is dark theme and let's set that to true let's see if the cart is still coming up and now we can see that the cart is down in the middle where, where it actually should be because like this this is actually positioned absolute by default unless and until we add this prop it's not gonna it's 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 gonna have an absolute position because like we had added some dynamic styles over the navbar so that's why we have to add this dark theme and also the fact that we are using a dark theme uh, we have to add that as well all right so now moving on let's create our main uh, cart sections 
so in our cart items container now you can close this book details uh, product listing all let me also close this app.js uh, I'll keep the cart page and I'll keep the details section as well so let's go to cart items dot container so here first let's just try to create let's just try to build a simple cart that shows like one of our cart items first and then we can use it as a component in order to like um, create multiple cart items right and so for that uh, let me remove the re let me remove this cart and instead I'm going to add a div here of class name container right to give the like uh, paddings on the both the sides and um, here I'm going to add an h1 tag that says cart I think we can we should add h2 instead of h1 and I'm gonna say yeah the cart should be fine let's just save that and let's see how this looks all right so we have this cart text looking good looking fine um, one thing I should do here is add a class name in the topmost in the topmost uh, element I'm going to add a container for this cart items so I'm just gonna say cart items cart items yeah container all right the main container and I need to style this so let me add another file here that says uh, cart items container container dot styles dot CSS right and let's import that here so import dot slash cart items cart items container dot styles dot CSS right and let's first see if the styles is working or not so let me go over here and just so now let's just style this cart items container so dot cart items container I just added a comma here let me replace that with dot okay so let me add a padding top and bottom so padding of 10% and 0 on the left and right all right so I think this is working instead of 10 let's just add a 5 yeah this looks much better so now let me add let me create those cart items first so here let me add a div right and this should be it should have a class name of cart item right and inside this so in our cart items I would want to like in our cart item card I want to have the I want to have the book image on the left and a little bit of description on the right um, yeah that should do it so let's just create that so inside this um, let's create a div of class name and let's say a cart item image container something like this uh, let's close this div and here I'm going to create another div that says Uh, let's add a class name as well and here let's just say cart item content container okay so this basically uh, is the div for the contents and this is for the image uh, uh, first I think we should start with the content um, let's add an h three tag here and here we should first have a book name 
right and let's add a paragraph text over here that um, renders the author author name right and finally I think we would want to have a price here so let's just add an h2 and inside it I'm just gonna write price for now let's just save that okay that that is looking good but I just want to add an h2 here in the book name and h3 over in our price okay just to give that hierarchy okay this looks much better and I think I should add an image as well so let's just add a static image for now I think I have added a static image right um, showcase card auth books images yeah we do have some static images right here so let me add an image uh, yeah let's just go with this 1984 WEBP so I'm gonna I'm gonna import it so import um, cart image from and I'm gonna say dot dot slash dot dot slash let's just locate that inside assets uh, inside books images and inside 1984 dot WEBP let's just save that so let's just use that image so I'm gonna say image and source and inside that I'm going to add the cart image and for the alt the alt attribute I'm going to say cart item image yeah let's just close the tag so basically we are importing an image and using it over here inside our source tag so let's just save this and see if the image is here yeah we are getting that image um, but this is currently very big so we need to style this up so <clears throat> so let me add a class in our image tag that says um, cart item image let's just save this and yeah let's just style this up so in our cart items container styles.css let's just add a cart item image let's just set its width so for the width uh, let me go with 10 rem and see how this looks yeah I think it's looking pretty good so yeah we should go with that and let's also like target this cart item the parent uh, component for the cart and I'm going to target it over here and inside this I am going to give it a display property of flex and I'm going to say right and let's just see if that and see yeah we are now we are getting right next to each other I'm not gonna add a justify content because that would take the book uh, contents right at the end so instead of that I'm just going to add some spacings in between but let me add a padding to the overall container so in our cart item let's add a padding of one rem and see how this looks uh, we are getting are we getting it let's add a border and see so border one pixel solid hash five 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 Okay, let's remove the L let's see all right we have the border let's add a border radius border radius of one rem. okay that's looking good let me add some more paddings so two rem no not on the border radius so two rem and the comp container okay this looks much better and I think I should like um, reduce the size of this image so instead of 10 rem let's add 8 and see how this looks all right let's go with 6 
yeah i think they should do it and let's add a little bit of space over here so in our so to do that um, we should target our cart item contained container let's just copy this and let's just paste it over here not art but cart and let's add a padding left of to rim let's save that and see how this looks all right we're not getting anything hmm. so i think cart item contained container yeah we added a small n that's why the style was not working let's just save that okay so now now we have a little bit of spacings in between a little bit room to breathe and i also want to like um bring this section a little bit down so let's add a padding top as well so padding or like padding top of 10 pixels let's just give it a hard value yeah this looks me this looks way better so let me add some spacings between the price and the author name right um so let's just go back to our yeah price over here let's just add a class name of cart item price something like this okay uh let's go back to our let's close this book data i don't know why i opened it but let's go to our cart items container styles and let's just target that cart item price right and let's just add a padding top of to them and let me change its color to var and remember we have like set the css variables for some values so i'm gonna add that variable over here and let's just say primary color i think i have this color over here yeah we're getting the primary color uh, instead of the primary color i'm just going to use primary color bright to give it a much brighter text right yeah so i think and i think uh, author name should also have a little bit of spacing from the book name so let's go back let's add a class name here or you know what i can directly target it since it's the only p tag that this div has i can target it using a card item contain container so card item contain container and i'm going to add p over here and i'm just going to give in give it a padding top of five pixels let's just save that and see hmm, i think it's, it looks a very subtle difference but it looks much better than before um let's add a 1.8 rem here instead of two yeah and finally let me also add some paddings on top and margins on top and bottom to our cart item container so yeah let's add a margin of top and bottom of 5 rem and 0 on the left and right okay 5 rem is too big so let's just add a 2 rem and see Hmm. Two rem works fine. So now instead of this uh, raw values, I'm just going to add this inside a container. So if we go back to our cart items container, instead of writing this multiple times, I'm going to embed this inside a container. This is kind of like our card. I'm going to add a cart item inside our card folder. Okay, that is inside the components. So let's so inside this cart folder, let's create another folder called cart item card okay <laughs> it might sound similar but they are two different things so let's create two files over here 
the first file would be cart cart item card dot js right and the next one would be as you guys know the styles for it so cart i think it should be cart item card dot styles dot css and for the cart item card let's just create a simple component so all right so we have created a simple component for this cart item card now let's also um link the style sheet along with it so import dot slash um, cart item card dot slides dot css so cart item card dot styles dot css right that should connect the css along with this file um, now inside our cart items container like we have created this cart item so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut this out and paste it inside our cart item card over here just like this and instead of this parent div let's just add a section over here i mean you can still add a div doesn't matter but i just like to keep the main container as a section right okay this looks good and uh, another thing that i want to do here is bring the styles as well so in our cart items container dot styles dot css i think we need to bring all these styles except for the cart items container yeah let's just save that and inside our cart item card dot css let's just paste all the styles let's just save that as well um yeah let's save our cart items container and one thing to notice here is that this cart item dot card uh, we're calling this cart image so we haven't defined that over here so let me just define it quickly so import cart image from dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash assets books images and let's just go with 1984 dot uh, WEPP okay let's just save that and let's just remove the cart image from the cart items container because we don't want it here now currently I think you won't be able to see anything because we haven't added our component over here so let me first bring the component so import cart item card so let's just call it over here so cart okay cart item card let's just save this up and there you go guys we have this cart item over here let me just add multiple and see if this works all right this is working pretty fine so now what i want to do is now since we, we already have our cart data so using that data i want to render this ui so let's go back to our code and let's bring the cart data in our cart items container and in order to do that we need our context api we need the help of context api um, let me remove this tiles for now uh, yeah you can remove this cart page as well let's remove this detail section as well yeah let's just keep only these two files okay so let's bring the cart data in our cart items container we already have defined that data it stays in our app.js we just have to call it over here so in order to call it we need the help of a use context api so use context api right and we also need to import the cart context so import cart context from the slash the slash the slash app yeah so let's bring in our uh, cart item data 
so here I'm just gonna say const is equals to and then say use context and inside this use context I'm going to add cart context because cart context is going to give us the cart data uh, now if you go to our app.js you can see that <coughs> The cart context is giving two things cart items and set cart items and we can destructure this object in our right over here so instead of this cart what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the curly braces and inside this i'm just going to add these two values that is cart items and set cart you know what and inside this i'm just going to call the cart items because we don't want the set cart items currently so i'm just going to call the cart items right and we can use this cart items value in order to like and this cart items value will con and this cart items will contain our uh, the, all the books all the book values uh, the book the cart values right so basically we're just destructuring those values uh instead of like bringing out the entire object so let me just console log and see how this looks for now so console.log cart items let's see what it is giving us let me inspect this page let's go to console and we are getting okay this comes from the footer.js37 so let's go to our footer.js37 footer footer.js line number 37 hmm. all right so we are getting this one array over here which is our cart items currently so if i go back to our home then books and add another book right let's just add this book okay this book has been added if i go to cart now instead of this one book i'm i'll i should be getting this two book over here the first one was harry potter that was already there right and the second one is to kill a mockingbird which we just um, added to the cart so we're going to use this data in order to show render our ui and this data we are getting it from uh, we are getting it from the cart items yeah let's just use the cart items and let's just loop through this so so basically this cart item is an array and let's just loop over this and uh, render our ui so for that let me remove these components and let's just add a uh, curly braces over here because we need some javascript so what i'm going to do is i'm going to call the cart items over here and then I'm going to map through these cart items. All right. And for each item, okay, I'm going to return a component, which is going to be our cart item card. And that's it, guys. So if you save this, now you can see that you are getting two cart items and the reason is because we have this two um, books over here so for each book you are getting this cart item okay so basically what we did here was this cart item is basically an array all right uh, it's basically an array so what we did was we looped through this array using the map function or the map method and for each item for each item in an array what we did was we just returned a component okay so here in this component what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two things the first thing is a key prop and I'm going to set that to item dot ID because whenever you are uh, looping through an array or a list each item list item should have a key value that should be unique and since our item that ID is unique um, you can also check that out in the book data we have a unique id for all of the books and i've just given item that id over here okay and the next next thing is um, i'm going to add a book data prop and inside of this book data 
I'm just going to send this entire item, which is basically our single book data. So let's just save this. And currently nothing's going to happen, but if you go to our if you go to the cart item card, you can actually get this book data by destructuring the props over here. So here I'm going to add um, book data because that is the prop name. So book data, right? And here instead of this book name, I'm going to say book data dot book name, right? Let's just save that and see and now you can see that we are getting different book name for different item okay and these two are basically what was in our cart so we are getting those uh, names and for the author name i'm going to say book data dot author name All right let's just save that there you go jk rowling and harper lee and finally for the price i'm going to say uh, book data dot price yeah that works fine and let's also add the rupee sign over here and for that we need to add the code which is ampersand hash a377 semicolon that is going to give our rupee sign um, we don't need a space over here and yeah we are getting this rupee sign along with the amount okay and finally we need to we need to change the image as well so instead of this cart image what i'm going to do is i'm going to say book data dot and i think the value should be book url something like that let's see all right guys now the image is all book image is also changed and the text images and the pricing is also changed okay now finally one thing that i would want to do here is add a delete button or like remove from card button so that when you click on this uh, the particular item is going to get removed from the card because if you think if you think about the card functionality we do have the functionality of adding the books to the cart. We should also have a functionality of remove a certain, removing certain items from the cart. So, okay, first let's just remove this cart image. We don't need that. Uh, let's bring in our styles.css cart item cart. And uh, for the price, let's not add a padding top of 1.8 rem. Let's just add a padding top of 5 pixels. Let's see, or like eight and eight over here as well. Okay, it is also narrow. I think this should work. Okay, and in our card item card, one last thing I want to add here is a button tag. So button tag, right? And here I'm going to say remove from cart. Okay, something like this. Uh, let's go back okay we do have that button now all we need to do is style that button so let's add a class name of delete button something like that uh, let's go to our cart item cart css and let's just style that so delete uh, underscore button and yeah let's just style this button so for the background color let's just add a uh, should i add an orange or should i add a black i think we should add a black over here so hash uh, 333 for the color let's just go with hash fff hash fff and let's just save that and see how this looks for now okay we need to add some paddings so padding 10 pixels i think uh yeah finally i think we should give it a border radius of 10 pixels for now 
all right 10 pixels is way big uh, what about five pixels hmm, much better uh, and also add a margin top of one rem okay this is looking much better and let's also add a cursor pointer so cursor pointer and um, let's add a transition of 0 0.3 seconds ease right and let me add styles for the hover as well so delete button colon hover and here i'm just going to set the background color to 555 i think this should work let's just go back all right this is working and now if you click now if you click on this button i want to remove this uh book from the cart so in order to do that we need the help of that unique id okay so remember that every book data that we have has a unique id right and we are going to use this id in order to remove the items from the cart okay so let me add an on click handler over here that says on click equals to handle remove so let's create that function so const handle remove is equals to a simple arrow function and here what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to console log dot log book data dot id okay let's just see uh, let's go back to our cart and here let me click this remove from cart and there you go we are getting this 8 which is it which is basically its id but if you click on to kill a mockingbird book you are getting 6 so you're getting different id for different books all right so we are going so we are going to use this id to check in our cart data and if this id matches then we are going to remove this data so for that we need to bring our cart data and our set cart items uh, function from here as well so let's bring our cart context in our cart item card as well so let's just add a use context over here we need to import the cart context so import cart context context from app right and let's restructure our two properties which is cart items and set cart items from the cart context so here i'm going to say const cart items and set cart items right equals to uh, use context and inside this i'm going to say cart context so cart context right and along with the book data dot id let's just console dot log uh, cart items just to check whether we get the values or not all right uh, let me add any of let me click on any of the book yeah we are getting the cart items as well so in order to remove a particular book from the cart items as i said earlier we are going to check the ids of the book right and we are going to apply a filter method and through that filter method we are going to remove a particular book now, now the concept is we are not removing anything we are just uh, returning a new array with the filtered data okay so the way we do that is with the help of array.filter method so if i add a cart items dot filter filter right and for each item item what we are going to do is we are going to return that particular item whose id 
is not equal to book data dot id okay so with this filter method we are going to we are going to loop through each of the item that the cart items has and we are going to check its id we are going to check its id with the book data dot id if the id matches that means if the book that you wanted to remove matches with the item dot id then we are not going to do anything but if the book does not match then we are going to return the item okay so in the end you will get all the items except for the one that had the same id as that of book data dot id and this is how the filter method operates if you save this right if you go back um, if you click on this harry potter and the chamber of secrets you're going to see that instead of this two elements in a cart you're just getting, getting a single element and if you click on this you're not getting the harry potter and the chamber of secrets right and this is the functionality at, that we actually wanted on clicking this remove from cart we wanted to remove that book from this array and we are actually being able to remove this okay so all we need to do now is change the state according to this new value so instead of this console log i'm just going to call our set cart items so i'm going to say set cart items and inside it it's going to filter out the new data okay and if i just save this go back now if i remove a particular book you can see that it is going to get removed from the cart as simple as that let's go to a book let's add multiple books to our cart page right uh, yeah let's go to our cart you can see that we have multiple books over here right and if i remove a particular book it's going to get removed from the cart all right guys so i think we have created the cart functionality as well uh, the ability to add items to the cart and remove from the cart like this is a basic uh, cart functionality you can add complexities later on but i don't want to go deep dive into the complexities as the video is already getting longer it's going to get long so i'm just going to end up till here when it comes to the cart functionality now what we need to do is we need to calculate the total and then start working on the checkout page all right so we are going to do that